Welcome to Words of Aloha with Pastor Izzy Manzo of Amazing Grace Ministries International. We're headquartered in Kailua Kona on the Big Island of Hawaii. Join us now as we get into God's Word. Let's pray. Father, we pray that you would just let this uh, study bring glory to you. And as we spend time, Lord, it's, a, it's fun to do home church in a way. It's also strain in a way. So I pray you lift the strain from me today and just let your word flow through me. Let it be a blessing to all that would hear. And uh, thanks for clearing up the sky now, Lord, that it's so pretty out there. I wish it would have been prettier earlier, but um, not complaining. Lord, you cause all things to work together for good. So I just look forward to what you're going to work. And I thank you for that. In Jesus' name. Everyone that agree with me said? Amen. Amen. You know, sometimes we forget the Lord is the God in charge of everything. You know, this morning I was praying, do, Lord, could you just make the rain? And I know Jan was praying that the rain would stop so you guys wouldn't have to see the house and, you know, she wouldn't have to clean extra. And while she's cooking 40 pounds of catfish for this morning's breakfast, um, she started, you know, raw catfish this morning at like 4 in the morning cooking off with white wine sauce and fancy herb, you know, make it really nice. And I don't know, uh, I don't think any came home from what I understand. So they, 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 they polished it off down at the beach. But it kept raining the entire time, and I'm asking Alfred, so what do you think, he's sitting in the front yard under the eave looking, and he goes, I don't think so, because it was just dark skies and pouring rain all across here. And we can see, you can't see, when you can't see the airport, the old airport from our house, we know you don't want to bother going because it's completely socked in. So we were, we didn't even have to send anyone down this morning. We just didn't have time to set up. But you didn't get to use a pavilion. Did you guys have rain while you were serving? Or yep. Right when you served. Thank you, Lord. The Lord is so the Lord blessed us that 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 uh, that they got to at least have the food to serve and uh, and feed the homeless. So for that, we're grateful that the Lord uses us to feed the homeless. And, uh, and it's, a, it's a blessing, guys. It's a light to our community. Jesus said, let your light shine. In such a way, men see your good works and they glorify your Father in heaven. And you know, I can go around town, especially when I walk around with my wife. I, I always get great compliments. Like, oh, thank you, thank you. I know they're really saying thank you to her. They, they don't care, you know, pastor. But, but thank you for the food because you... <laughs> You know, feeding the, the, the ones that are hurting. And, you know, Jesus is always a champion for the poor. Uh, yeah, in fact, Holland, would you toss me that, that uh, or read that for me out loud, okay. would you? So this is a note that Jan was handed from one of, the, one of the folks that we serve today. It says, thank you, Amazing Grace International. Many thanks to you and all of your members and volunteers for an unforgettable breakfast at Kona Airport. May God bless the work of your many friends. So praise the hands, Lord. Hands, many hands. Many hands, okay. Yes. So, so the Lord is, you know, that touched someone this morning. Even while the rain was going on and we were cleaning and going, uh-oh, we're not going to make big service on the beach. I know God, when he says he causes all things to work together for good, that means all. Sometimes I don't understand what he's up to. You know, I'm kind of hoping that Andre, uh, uh, your, your little boys get to go home with some of Daniel's fodder that he cleaned he cleaned his room deep cleaning this week and it's all sitting there waiting and we were thinking as we were cleaning that would be really good for Mario. and that would be really and but we just set it aside so you can pre-approve it but but like little toys and things that daniel's like i don't need this anymore this needs to go to someone who could use it and uh i love my son's attitude you know that that was for when i was younger now it needs to go to someone else who's younger who can appreciate it and it, isn't it nice to get things at the time when you need it and when, when you can appreciate it. So cool how the Lord can work that out. Well, we studied last week in 1 John chapter 3, in verse 17, he says this. Well, uh, let me start at verse 16. We know love by this, that it says that Christ laid down his life for us. And we also ought to lay down our lives for the brethren. It says, but whoever has the world's goods and sees his brother in need and closes his heart against him, how does the love of God abide in that person? You know, if, if you see your brother in need and you just close your heart and walk on by, yeah, I know he has a need, I know I can help him, 
is that truly showing the love of God to people? I mean, this love we're, we're, we're studying, we just saw last week. It's a love that is expressed not, John said, not by word or by tongue, but by deed and truth. Deeds are actions. Actions, you know, it's the, it's the saying, this is, by the way, where in the Bible, the teaching, the idea that you, you've probably heard the idiom many times, actions speak louder than words, it comes right from First John. The idea that it's our actions that really show that we love people. And you can say, yeah, yeah, I have, I, you know, I love people with God's love. But if you don't express that in a tangible way, you have, you have the you, you have some of the world's goods and they have a need. And you you have the the means to help them in that need. And you walk right on by. Remember the story of the Good Samaritan where there was a man that had fell into the hands of robbers? Jesus told this story. He said there was there was a fellow that was traveling down the uh, down down the uh, we, we there's actually the, the road there in Israel that leads from the back of the Mount of Olives through this, this ravine, basically, it's a canyon, that leads all the way, like, uh, what is it? Don't quote me on it. It's 17 to 20 miles away to Jericho, which you, in Israel's ancient days was the capital city for Israel during the, um, during the winter months. It, people don't realize, Jerusalem gets cold in the winter. They get snow, even. There's pictures I've seen of that gold dome that you see uh, of the old city of Jerusalem, the, the Dome of the Rock Mosque, covered with snow. And uh, we used to go on tours in February and wear down coats and be freezing. And like, why did, you know, and then I find out from the guide, well, the king didn't live here in the winter. I mean, think about it. They didn't have central air and central heating. They, 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 they just transferred over. They go down towards the desert region, towards Megiddo, to, to, towards where... Um, the Dead Sea is, and Jericho is located at a lower elevation, and in the winter months, because it's down lower in the desert, it's warmer. So it's just perfect weather. They, they go and spend their, you know, run, run Israel from Jericho during the winter, and then go up when it's getting too warm to be down in the desert, go back to Jerusalem, and have it as the summer palace, so to speak, of, you know, running the kingdom. Well, this was... There was a route between those two called the Valley of the Thieves, um, or also called in the Psalms, the Valley of the Shadow of... You guys know this one, right? What's it called? Of Death. It was not known for being a great um, passageway because it's a really steep ravine that goes down, and there's a little trickle of water sometimes that runs through that valley. Um, it comes from Jerusalem and trickles down towards the lower elevation, out towards Jericho. And so... Whenever you're in desert, you want to go and find shade and water. So the, the natural you know, flow of traffic, so to speak, was you came over the back of the Mount of Olives and you went down in that ravine and you'd pass all the way down towards Jericho. Well, Jesus, they said, uh, there was a, an attorney testing Jesus, you know, saying, um, you know, I was wondering, what's the greatest command in the law and, you know... And he said, how does it read to you? He says, um, well, it reads you should uh, love the Lord your God and love your neighbor as yourself. And he says, good. You got it. Do it. And you'll live. That's Jesus telling the, the attorney the answer. And he, he says, and who is my neighbor? Good old attorney. You know how they always talk in that, that lawyerese lingo. Well, and okay, then who is my neighbor? And Jesus said, okay, there was a man who went from Jerusalem. Now, I'll, I just told you all the topography so you would understand this story. He went from Jerusalem down toward Jericho. And by the way, if you were traveling, this was also a, a perfect spot for thieves to hang out in the caves along the canyon walls because they could see, like, look down and see you coming and they could wait and pounce upon you. And so Jesus says, and then there was a man who was traveling down and he... He headed towards Jericho, and it says he fell into the hands of robbers. And they beat him, they stripped him, they stole his stuff, and they left him laying there for, like, half dead. He's, he, he's really close to death. And Jesus goes on and says, three different fellows came along. 
to see this man laying on the side of the pathway there. And do you remember the first one? Does anyone know this parable? It was a religious fellow. It was one of the, it was one of the religious leaders. He says, you know, one of the priests passed by and he looks at him and, uh, you know, like, I, I, I can't stop to help this fellow. I, I'm very important, very busy. I got to get, you know, maybe he, he must have been heading towards you. So I got to get to temple or whatever. And he tucks his robe in and walks by the guy and leaves him there. And then Jesus says, and a Levite, which is the tribe that we get the priesthood from, passes by. And he sees him and doesn't stop to help him, just passes and continues by him. Then a Samaritan. These are the guys that are, to the Jewish culture, they're half-breeds. They're from when the time when Syria had invaded Israel and they had, they had killed the men and they took the women and they forced relations with the women to like say, you know, we've conquered you. And now you're, you know, they got the women pregnant. And so any of these kids was like a, a reminder in their face of your enemy has conquered you. They've, they've taken your women and bedded them. And now you have these offspring. And that's where the Samaritans come from. Do you ever wonder why in the Bible it seems like there's a little animosity between the, the Samaritans and the, and the pure Jews? Because the Jews were told not to marry with, with, with the, the outsiders, and here they are. It was forced on them. So it's like an in-your-face. So who's Jesus picked for the third guy? A Samaritan. He says a Samaritan passes by, and he sees the man, and it says and he, he gave him what we call first aid. He took oil and, 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 and wine, and he washed his wounds. And that, that was their way of you know cleaning the wound with the, the wine, putting the oil as the, like we call sav or antibiotic you know, or, you know like um, antiseptic. antiseptic yeah put that on there and they put he put him on his own beast of burden it says and took him all the way to the inn and he said to the innkeeper here take care of this man feed him you know anything he needs put it to my bill and I'll, I'll, I'll take care of it then Jesus turned to the attorney and said so which one of the three proved to be a neighbor to, to the to the man that fell into the hands of the thief. And you can just hear it. I mean, I just, I, I, when I read that story, I think the guy is just hating this. And I suppose, some, it says, I suppose. Now, we don't have the inflection, so I, I can't wait to watch it on the big screen when we get to heaven. I'm going to say, could you replay that part? I want to see what, what that guy's voice is. You know, is he cracking when he's going? I suppose it was the Samaritan. And Jesus, the one, he goes, he didn't even say the Samaritan. I suppose it was the one who showed mercy. Wouldn't even say a Samaritan. That's how proper he was as a Jew. I'm not even going to mention his name. The guy who showed mercy. And what was Jesus' response? Then go therefore and do likewise. Go show mercy to people. You know, they don't have to earn. Mercy is something you don't earn. It's something given, not because you earned it, but because of the generosity of the person. You know, you show mercy to someone who's downcast and, and in a bad way. Not because they, they earned it, but because of your character, who you are. And you can show, you know, this is John's talking about this. Our actions are going to speak louder than words. We see our brother in need. We can't withhold the, the things, what just stuff of this earth that we could help them with and then say, we, yeah, we love you, without showing it by our actions. So John, I like John. I, li I love First John. Because it, t it teaches us, be people of action. And, you know, a lot, of t a lot of Christian preaching today is preaching this, what I call, heady theology that sounds really good, but doesn't spur the, the people to actually live the way the Lord would want us to live. Like, actually do it. It's a lot of, sounds really nice, sounds like a good idea, but how do you, rubber meets the road, how do you actually apply it? You go down and you help feed the homeless. When there's a feeding, you you try to you know you see your brother in need and you know this church I don't I, I know I'm preaching to the choir here because you guys already do it but but there are going to be people that watch us and they and they're going to find out there's just so people know there are churches where we really do help people and there are needs and and the church is really God's hand of mercy to those people in need we get to be the living the like some people say I wish I could see God I need a God with some uh, how they put it? Uh, I need a God with skin on, you know, not an invisible one. I need to see one I could actually, you know. And we get to be the that hand of 
his compassion, that, that, that physical touch of the Lord through us to people hurting. And we're so blessed, guys. We have these people that God has put in our fellowship that um, are, are, are Jeff and Elizabeth that started coming. They had the Four Good Thrift Store. I feel so blessed. I can, I, I can happily dump stuff off on them, and they, they receive it happily because they'll turn it around and, and sell it. And then they, at the end of the week, come and set up a rack with four-way rack and set out all these clothes for the homeless each week. And they said they have adopted us because they see what we do and they want to be part of it. They said, we, we used to support like 13 different um, organizations, but we felt like we were really not making a dent in any one. We were like spread out too too thin. So they've decided, we see what you do and we want to be part of that. And So we're going to concentrate our efforts to help you guys. And now they're starting to close their shop on Sunday morning so they can be at church. Which I don't see them today, but uh, did they come down? They were down there. They were down there. So... Feeding, you know, being that hand of mercy. Here, your brother needs a, a shirt, you give him one. And it's really fun for me because I get to clean up my closet and, <laughs> and pass it on. You know, it's, it's so... Does anyone here besides me enjoy that, that feeling you get when you get to help somebody in need and you see that, that, that expression on their face like, Oh, thank you. I really need it. And you're thinking, I really didn't. Sometimes I'm giving away stuff. I hate to say it, but stuff I didn't even need. I have, two, I have two or three of those, and I'm just so grateful that I can find somebody who could be blessed to have one. And, but the, I, I love how it builds me up when I see their face. And they're just so, thank you for that. I really needed, I remember one guy was like, I really needed a button-up shirt. I have a job interview this week. And all he had was a T-shirt, and it was... It had been slept in out on the streets, and it looked like it, you know. And, and he, But he was like, I need to clean up. I have a job interview. And do you have a razor? We don't always have razors with us, but it was one of the weeks where they had at the food basket uh, a package of razors that someone had tore it open. And, you know, the stores donate stuff. Somebody even just cracks open the package so that I'm like, cool. Happen to have, there's five disposable razors, you know. There was like a six-pack. One was missing. I'm like, somebody must have busted into this. And I'm like, okay. So I got five razors. Here you go. And he was like, so, uh, a, a, a disposable razor and a, and a button-up shirt made him feel like, God, you care about me. You really care. That, that's, you know, and when you're in the place where that meets your need, and I don't you guys weren't there, but I had the privilege of being the, the vessel to actually pass on that blessing that day. And the fun part was, he was taking one of my old shirts. I, you know, on the, on the, I was like, I know that shirt. Yeah. And it, I was just so, it, it was so cool to see the appreciation when, when, when you're giving those. Now, sometimes when you give, do people always show appreciation? No, sometimes they just... Yeah, like, you, I deserve this, or whatever, or you owe me, or... But should we give anyway, in the love of God? Yes. This is where the action of our faith comes into practice. Well, he's been talking about these things, and, and, and explaining that, you know, truth for us to walk in. And last week, we got almost to the end of the chapter. Let me just finish up this part here in verse 18. It said, little children, let us love not with word or with tongue, but with deed and in truth. In verse 19, he says, And we know by this that we are of the truth, and we assure our hearts before him. It says, And whatever our heart condemns us, we know from last week God is greater than our hearts, and he knows all things. Beloved, if our heart does not condemn us, it says we have confidence before God. And whatever we ask, we receive from him, because we keep his commandments and we do the things that are pleasing in His sight. You know, it's a nice benefit to walking in a manner that you know you're trying to please the Lord. Because whenever you go to the Lord and ask Him something, it says right here, you can ask from Him and receive those things that you're asking. You know, this, is, this isn't this is a fake thing when we go to God. How many of you have asked the Lord for things and had Him answer you when you're, when you're praying about stuff? You need, God, I need an answer. I, I, I need some help down here. Or I need a provision. You know, we can ask Him for anything, 
But there is a there is something that I want to point out here. It says here, we we can ask because we keep his commandments. And we do the now what's his commandment? Well, don't worry, if you thought that John already anticipated it, he wrote it in the very next verse. He says, And this is his commandment. And this is the part I want you to, to take away today. What is his commandment for us today? It comes in two parts here. The first part is, first, that we believe in the name of his Son, Jesus Christ. That's God's command. Believe in my Son. Why do we have to believe in him? Because Jesus, they said, tell us what works we should do to, to, please, the, to please God. And, and, and what works should we do to have everlasting life? That's a pretty good question, by the way. If any of your friends ask you, well, what works do you have to do at your church to get eternal life? Do you have to feed homeless? No. Do you have to give all your money to your church? No. Do you have to go on missions to get eternal life? No. No. I'm telling you this because I went to, to a certain church that we were told these, these were mandatory. You must do all of these things to even get a chance to get everlasting life. This, is, this was part of the teachings of that church. It was false teaching. But they taught it like that was the work you had to do to, to gain even a chance for your everlasting life. Jesus said in John, I believe it's 7, he said, this is the work you must do. Believe on him whom the Father has sent. Period. There's no extra, no nothing more. There's only one thing you have to do to get everlasting life. Believe on Jesus. John is going to confirm that for me right here. John was the guy that leaned on Jesus' breast at the Last Supper. He was right there. And John says, this is the work that you have to do. His commandment, God's commandment. First, believe in the name of His Son, Jesus Christ. And the second work you got to do, uh, I know some Christians would like this to not be included. <laughs> they would like to, they can even handle the first part, but the second part they get a little sketchy on when I tell them, and there is a second part that you must do, and what is it? Love one Love another. One another. <laughs> oh. And, oh, just as He commanded us. Now, if someone says to you, where does it say he commanded that? John chapter 13. He says uh, around verse 35, This is my commandment that you love one another. A new commandment I give to you. Okay? That you love one another. He repeats it in that chapter twice. That this is his command. It's, it, this, is a, this is his suggestion that you love one another. No. We, you have to. You have to love that guy next to you. Sorry, Dottie. I know he can be a rascal, but... And you have to love her, even in her rascaliness. Could you show, show them on the thing? I mean, they're really the rascals over there. They, 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 um, these two rascals over here, got to love him. They, this, is, this is the practical stuff, guys. We have to love one another. It's not, an, it's not optional for, for, from the Lord's perspective. And listen to this, verse 24. This is as far as I plan on going today. This verse is powerful. It says, the one who keeps his commands... It says, abides in him. And he will abide in him. So, so you get to abide in God, and God abides in you. And we know by this that he abides in us. How, how, abide means remains. How do you know God really stays with you, that you stay with God? Well, he answers it. We know by this that, that he has, by the Spirit of God, which he has given to us. You guys know that God gave his Spirit, it says, as an earnest deposit. In the, in the Greek, it's the word for um, when you buy a property and you put the, the down payment that says, I'm, I'm hold this, I'm, I'm, I'm taking it. It's not, it's not like, I'm going to put a little money down and I might come back for it. It's you put down enough of a deposit that, you, you know how, I don't know if any of you bought properties, but generally the person on the other end, when you, when you go to make an offer, you have to put down a substantial amount so that, they don't want someone, some clown to go, yeah, I'll put $5 down, and then if they change their mind, they walk away and lose 5 bucks. They go, we want a minimum of 10% of the value, or 15 20 So, you know, some, some bigger, you know, real estate deals require a larger portion than that. Because they don't want anyone Mickey Mousing around and changing the thing, you know. They want you to say, okay, you put 30% down, then we know that you're serious. And if you don't come up with 30%, don't even, don't even submit an offer. 
you know, coming from Italians back east, I know that was kind of like how we discern the people that were serious from the people who are just what my dad used to call the dreamers. You know, the dreamers always want to buy the big property, but the guy who puts the money down, and if he puts it down and he doesn't come through, you get to keep the money, right? Well, God goes, I'm serious about you. I paid for you. I, I paid so that you're, you're important to me. I, I'm putting down, and I, what, what can you pay for us? To show his intention, how much he's sincere. He says, I'll give you my Holy Spirit to be with you. My Holy Spirit will teach you. He'll lead you. He'll guide you. He'll comfort you. Whenever, you're, whenever your heart is troubled, listen, the longer that you're in Christ, the more you become aware that God's Spirit can comfort with a comfort, it says, beyond all human comprehension. You can be going through the worst thing and God's Spirit will just be there with you going, hang in there. And there'll be no, there's no, you know, something like, do you hear an audible voice? No. There are things that the Spirit speaks to my spirit and you ask, how do you know it? And I'm like, I can't really say it's like a word, physical, loud, like a loudspeaker. Is he? It will be okay. You know? It's not like that. There's something inside. My spirit knows in a way that is louder than words. I can't even express it. It's like inwardly, my heart inside knows. The Lord going, it's going to be okay. I'm with you. And when he, when his spirit does that for me, and it, no matter what anyone else says, they go, prove there's a God. I'm like, you don't understand. It's like he makes me know inside stuff that... And then he pulls it off, and I'm just like, that was cool. I mean, that was really cool. I mean, he does stuff beyond the natural understanding. You know, I can be stressing about bills. God, you know, we have a small... Okay, today we have a small crowd. Uh-oh. That's going to stop the Lord from paying my mortgage, you know? Because God is really dependent on how many people. Did you guys know that? We need to have, like, we need to triple our attendance. And we're going to go to a seminar next. So I'm going to bring all the leaders, of, you know, to, to go to a seminar. There's, they actually have seminars. How to get more nickels and noses in your pews. They actually, uh, they're, they're, I get brochures all the time. that Sign us up and we will come to your church and we will show you how to get more ties from your members. We will t show you how to grow your membership and to get more money. And we will only charge you 10% for teaching me. Wait a minute. That, that sounds like kind of like a business deal. I mean, I have a business degree. That's the stuff the world teaches. Is that how we're supposed to pr treat, treat the gospel? H how do we get our daily bread taken care of as a Christian? Like, like me, as the pastor, I'm like, Lord, I have to t tell everybody else... Pray to the Lord. You know? What's it say in the Lord's Prayer? Give us this day our daily bread. So I'm telling everybody, go to God and ask Him whatever you need today. And He'll... And he, it says you can have confidence when you go before Him and ask anything. Now, I'm going to show you in, in a couple weeks in First John 5, you ask anything according to His will and you know you get your answer. Because it says right in the next verse, this is... Just a little preview for later, guys. First John 5, it says, If we ask anything according to His will, this is the confidence we have before Him, that we know He hears us. And verse 15, this is First John 5, 14 and 15. And if we know He hears us in whatever we ask. You know, you ever wonder why at the end of the prayer we say, in, 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 Your will be done, Lord, in Jesus' name. Ask anything, He says, according to His will. And Jesus said, Ask in My name, so your joy will be full. So you do those things, and I tell you what, it says, when you do, you know whatever you asked, you will have that request which you have asked. You're going to get an answer. People say, do you really think God answers your prayers? I'm like, um, yeah, after 35 years, I'm pretty sure it works like every time. But I've learned some things. See, sometimes I'm asking stuff, I want my way. And I learned that God's ways are above my ways. Something better not to ask for my exact understanding. God, could you just take care of my needs however you want to do it? Because, see, I could be thinking, I need you to do this. Get more people to come to church. And he's going, but I just want you to minister to the people you got. You know, those ones you got in front of you, they're the ones that I need you to talk to. 
I, and you know, as a church gets really big, some people tell me it loses that personal touch, you know, where you can't really talk to the pastor, you can't talk to the people. And I'm thinking, but a lot of ministers want a big church. You know why? Because they think it's security, financial security. Get a big church, lots of, lots of noses means lots of nickels. You know, and, and there's pastor's conferences where they're teaching this teaching. I'm thinking, why don't we teach the guy to be faithful with the people God puts in front of him? Because the only thing Christ is going to require of you is he's going to say, what did you do with what I gave you? Were you faithful to the people that, did you help the people that I put in front of you? Because he's not going to, first of all, he's not going to give you a huge crowd Unless you be faithful, the Bible says be faithful with little things, and then you get put in charge of what? Of much. A lot of guys don't like doing little things. They're like, just start me off, Pastor, with a big mega church. And then I'm like, that's going to be make, big mega problems for you. And, and the devil will use that. He'll use it to appeal to men's pride. Oh, you're up there because you're so good, and you're, the, you're God's man. You're his like superstar. And it's a good thing he has you on the team. And that has led to many... How many pastors have you heard of, of these mega churches that there's a big debacle and he falls into sin and there is somebody... Because pride entered in. You know, we guys, you guys know we sing that song, He has shown the old man what is good. Micah 6, 8. What does the Lord require of you? Do justly, love mercy. And what's the last thing? Micah 6, 8. And walk, you got it. Walk humbly with your God. No matter if you're called to be a leader in the church or you're behind the scenes, stay humble. Because it's a lot lower fall to the ground when you're already humble than when you get prideful and stick your nose in the air. Every time we're prideful, the Bible says pride goes before the fall. A haughty spirit goes before destruction. It's a pretty stern warning. Don't, get, don't go there. But our human nature is so easily, you know, enticed with things that fuel our pride. You know, we love the, the accolades. We love the things that, that, oh boy, you're great. You're great. You know, when you give, just so that I, I, I don't want to take away from, because of the, the people that so much support the goings on and the giving at the church here. But the Bible teaches us when you give, don't let your right hand know what your what? Your left hand is doing. In other words, don't make a show of it. Just do your giving as unto the Lord. Because He sees it and it says He will repay. If you do it to be seen by men, you do a big show. In fact, I had one person come up one time and they were waving their check around. In front of the, you know, guys at the beach. Right in front of everybody. They come up to me at the end. Where do I put my tie? You know? Like, hey, look everybody, I'm getting... They're not saying those words, but their body language sure was. It was like... Look at me, I'm giving everybody look. Where's the tie box? It, you know, the, Holland had already done the announcement, said there's a box back on the coffee table, you know, if you'd like to support the it, They were like trying to say, hey, everybody, I'm getting, and I'm thinking, Lord, this is, you know, going to be, hope this is a big check. It was like $1. <laughs> you know, they folded it up and waved, and I just, you know what Jesus said? If you do that to be seen of men, you already received your reward. Just that they saw it was your reward in full. You got your, you got your pat on the back. Wow, what a good person you gave. But when we give, we're trying to give so that we're pleasing Him. As unto Him. And now I'm sorry I shared about my shirt going. I won't get any treasure for that one. But, 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 but I tell you, I got great... I, I felt the blessing of being used as a vessel for the Lord. And I want to encourage you, when it comes to giving, when I hear these messages where preachers are preaching, give, give, give till it hurts and all this, give to our thing or we're going to go out of business. My wife and I, guys, July 4th this year will make 24 years, going on our 25th year here, 1992, uh, yeah, 2016. 24 years of serving the Lord here in Hawaii. Four kids, came here with nothing, no, no connection, just came and planted a church and trusted the Lord to supply our needs. And we got invited to supper this week by a family who says, oh yeah, we've been coming to your church 
since you were in the movie theater. That was like 23 years ago. They come every year and they're always just so glad to see the fellowship, see the believers. They feel like this is their home church away from home church, you know, their, their fellowship on the mainland. This is where they come and get fellowship. I just feel so blessed that God would bring us people like that. And they always support us in the Lord, you know. And this time, after all this time, they said, well, we never taught about it, but we were wondering, would you like to come to, over, we're at a condo, would you like to come over and have supper, bring your family? So we went over there, and the kids were like, wow, we get to go to someone else's house? You know, instead of they all, they all, they all they, yeah, they were, they, they were like, this is so cool. And they cooked, and it was taco bar, you know, like, like make your own, pile whatever you want. And they were just in heaven, you know, like, whoa, look at this. And the, and the flat taco shell, that, I don't know if you've seen this, they have a taco shell. I've only seen it on TV. It's like got a flat bottom now instead of a curve. And they, and they had them. My first time seeing them in real life, and they're like, flat tacos. Daniel's got them lined up next to each other. He's filling them up, you know. And I'm, I'm like, going, I'll wait my turn, but man, that's a that's gonna be fun, you know. The silly little things that the, it's like, and they they were so they were happy that to have us come over. We got the the blessing of receiving that, and 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 I think, you know, guys, if you've never been in a place where you need God to supply your daily bread for your family and seen Him do miracles, how He does that. Even from, for, for us, it's been many a time when the families leave from their vacation. Oh, Pastor, can we stop by? We got some extra groceries. I've shared this testimony before. We have some extra things, and if we leave them at the condo, they're just going to, we don't know what they'll do. They'll just, whatever, go to the housekeeper or something, or, or throw them away. We don't want to throw it away. You know, can we drop it off to you? And I cannot tell you how many times in 24 years our grocery list on the fridge will have those items and they'll stop by, here, we're leaving for the airport. We just wanted to drop off a few things, you know. Went to Costco, we bought the big packs, and there's our toilet paper. There's our, you know, all the things that, that and the Lord goes, and I'm thinking, Lord, could you bring more people to give more money so we could go buy the groceries? He's going, why? I'm just going to deliver. <laughs> now, you might laugh at me for that, but it grows your faith to know. When someone says, how do you know God's real? I said, you don't understand. Like on weeks when there's not a lot in the tie box, God doesn't go, oh no, I don't think I can handle this. We got a whole family to feed. I'm not sure if I can do this one. This is really big. I mean, there's not enough ties. So we're just going to, oh, God, what do I do? Worry, worry. Do you think God really freaks out? He just goes, watch this. And he does all these. And whether you realize it or not, it, it, has anyone else had God do these little wink? I call them winks. Where he just pulls off some things, someone just stop, happens to randomly stop by, and oh, by the way, here we wanted to give you this, and and it was just what you needed. And you and people say, how do you know God's real? I'm saying, because of a living testimony, His Spirit has been with me for these years. He said, I'll let you know that I'm, so you know that I'm with you. I'm giving you my Spirit. And my Spirit. We studied this with the youth. His Spirit gives us peace beyond all human comprehension. When the world doesn't make sense, when, when we don't really understand it, God goes, let me give you my peace. It's going to be okay. And then he pulls off some cool thing, and we just sit there and go, why was I, you know, sometimes I kick myself, why was I so worried? Did God quit? You know, the only time that we should worry is if God quits his job. Then, then you have legitimate reason to worry. But until then, don't call me up and say, oh, Pastor, let's, I'm having a freak out. Freak out with me. I'm, I'm like, I'm not going to freak out with you. Because, uh, I mean, uh, uh, unless God's quit. If he's quit, then we can both run around like chickens with our heads cut off. But if he hasn't quit his job, don't worry. His spirit is still at work in all of our lives. Anyone give an amen to that? Amen. amen. He's still at work. Let him keep doing that work. The Bible says, he who began a work in you will be faithful to complete it. So what he has started in you, there's areas we're all growing in. We're all growing in, in areas where we have to trust the Lord. It could be for a relationship. It could be for bills. It could be for, you know, whatever it is that... It, it, it's funny how it's different things for different people at different times. You know, one week you're worrying about, help me do this relationship, and the next week you're worrying about the, the, the physical, give me this day my daily bread thing, you know. 
I need some something to eat or you you may not ha be facing the same thing at the same season as someone else is but have a little compassion sometimes uh you know Christians are short with other Christians cuz the thing that they're going through is a little different than you know, I like being around the more mature Christians that have spent a few years cuz you know what they basically have gone through all of them they they've gone through having to trust God for the relationship having to trust God for the bills Having to trust God for all the different... And, and they get a kind of a seasoned attitude of, you know what? Our boss is on the job. Don't... I don't got to stress. And we need... We need it, by the way, if you, if you don't already have that worked in your heart that you know God's on the job for everything, get... Start finding people in the fellowship that have, that have had God grow them and hang out with them. Because you need it. You need that... That spiritual, you know, boost. Because when you get around someone that's had it, that I used to call it the older generation of Christians. You know, the ones that had been doing it for a while. You get around, well, as a young man, I always tried to surround myself with the older Christians because their perspectives were a lot different. They didn't freak out about little stuff. They didn't like, and all the young Christians were freaking out about everything. Oh, it's a big problem. Oh, no. Sally broke up with Johnny. Oh, no. It's the end of the world. And, you know, and the older Christians just going, it'll be all right. You know, Sally and Johnny weren't meant to be. You know, they, they have a different perspective. And, and it just kind of like, okay. Get yourself around other believers. Don't, the Bible says, don't forsake yourself assembling together. We need each other. Because sometimes you're going to have a rough day and someone else is going to be there to... You know, when one is weak, what's the Bible say? The other is strong. This works with spouses. You know, when one is weak, the other is strong, vice versa. The other one is weak, then the... Uh, and I can test this from my own my own marriage, you know. For Jan and I, it's amazing how it's that one day when 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 she's having the rough day, God gives me supernatural strength. And then the, the very next day, let's be honest, does this ever happen where you ping pong from really good one day to you're the one having the rough day the next day and they're the one that's pulling the weight. I mean, we're almost to our 30th anniversary this year. I'm praying for a cruise, by the way. Please. God. <laughs> I got a praise for, oh, I forgot to show this. We went to a garage sale yesterday. I got a tux for 25 bucks. Fits me beautifully. And the, with the fancy pants, you know, and, and uh, the guy said, I wore this on an NCL cruise. Well, that's the cruise ship we went on. Uh, he's like, well, you don't really need this fancy of a tux. I'm thinking, I don't care. It's kind of fun to dress up. You know, in Hawaii, this is our dress. I'm the most dressed up cat, you know. But, but you know, I'm like, okay, thanks, Lord. I get the tux with, because the last time we went, somebody, you had to leave your bags unlocked. They had that rule, you have to leave them unlocked. We get to our room. And all of my, the little pouch that I had, the little cummerbund and the little, the little buttons you stick backwards through your shirt, you know, on your, on your tuxedo shirt, the little black buttons and the little cuff links and all that, they were all gone. Someone stole the little packet of all the stuff that goes. So my tux on the cruise, I have just the jacket. I had the shirt. What? That, yeah, the, the jacket I borrowed from Pastor Bruce Campbell. I had his jacket. <laughs> you guys are crack. You guys are just. Seriously, I didn't have a suit jacket, so I borrowed Bruce's jacket. I, I don't know where we got the pants. Bruce's pants and Jim's jacket. Oh, yeah. Bruce's, Bruce's <laughs> slacks, Jim, Jim Stablin's jacket, and then I don't know where we... I think we actually... Did we buy the shirt? No, it was Bruce's. It was Bruce's shirt. So anyway, I, I, between a couple of different patches, I managed to pull off looking somewhat ready, and I had the little cummerbund set all brand new. I bought it like eBay or something for a few bucks. And that's what they stole. My little parts that go on the... And I was like... And then yesterday we went to a garage sale down the street. And they had all, the, everything included. The guy's like, well, you need all the little stuff. And the pie and the stuff. I was like, that's included? Yeah. I'm like, okay, deal. No, Now I know. I've been praying for this cruise. I just didn't... A, didn't it must be going, you know. I'm just like... <laughs> Michelle's like, Dad... Uh, Raquel at the table. What's the cruise report, Dad? Have you checked on them? You know, when you don't have a lot of money, you don't really like to check on them because you kind of makes you... Uh, has anyone ever experienced what I'm talking about where you, you check on them and you know you can't afford it, so you just... It's like window shopping. It's fun for a while, but after a while, you're like, I don't want to look at it anymore because 
it's more than I can afford. So it's kind of like window shopping in a window where you, you know you ain't buying. And, you know, it, it, get, the Bible says hope deferred makes your heart sick. So sometimes I don't even want to look, you know. But I do know I can talk to my father. And he's done this before where he'll just, like, we, we signed up for the newsletter and they sent us this last minute deal and said, cruise announcement for Hawaii residents only. For the ship that comes here on Wednesday, the Pride of America, you can, you can get on that ship because we have a couple of empty rooms and we just want to, they rather fill the ship. So they, they charged us $69 a piece for an 11 day cruise that went here down to the Fanning Islands around for the kids and 139 for me and 139 for Jan. We're like, we can't eat, not, not like they feed you. They, I mean, no. they have buffets and you eat like kings. We can't eat like this. And, and then, to top it off, Don, our assistant pastor by then, had taken the, the NCL cruise credit card and figured a way to pay our electric bill, our water bill, our mortgage, everything through the card on the credit union site. So we had all these points, so we went for free. We're like, you know, and I'm sitting next to people, and they're going, they, they're saying, the guy's going, I got a deal. I only paid $1,600 a piece for me and $1,600 for my wife. And I, I couldn't dare tell them I paid $139 for me and $100. And I used free points, you know. I mean, I just, the Lord goes, just shut up, you know. He's not, you're going to ruin his trip if you tell him on the cruise how cheap you got to get. But we were just like, yeah, this is great, you know. And, and all, all Raquel could think of is, they have sprinkles at the ice cream station. You know, they have this little soft serve thing and you put sprinkles on. And she's like, cruises are great, you get sprinkles. You know, she's like hoarding them, bringing them back to the room with little baggies. I got sprinkles, look, I got, mom, isn't it cruising great? Uh, I love the eyes of a child. Because what we would just totally overlook, they look at with such glee. And, and, and they have that, you know, that, that rejoicing. We forget to do that. We, we're God's children. Can we rejoice over even little things that the Lord does? Those little winks that He does, those things. And you go, wow, that's, that's like giving me sprinkles, Lord. You, you, you know, sometimes we just forget to... What's the Bible say? Unless you be like a child, you can't receive the things of the kingdom of heaven. There's so much goodness God has for us, but we forget to... Keep that childlike appreciation. So that's what I'm going to close with today. Stay childlike. Let God do what He's going to do. And His Spirit will be with you. That's the part that it's, it's, he, His Spirit will... It's a, Jesus says, I'm never going to leave you. I won't forsake you. And He gave His Spirit as a down payment to say, I'm coming back for you. So don't worry. When you feel like is, you know, your faith is being tested, you have God's Spirit there to comfort you. He'll, he, and he, Jesus said, he will teach you. He will lead you. He will guide you. When you don't know what to do, cry out, God, I don't know what to do. And all, you'll be amazed at how many different ways he can answer what to do. I mean, sometimes he'll have someone else tell you the answer. And you think, wow, is that really the answer? And then someone else will come, tell you the same thing. You're like, gee, out of two people's mouth, just like back to back. I was just wondering, what should I do about this situation? And. Here you get, it's like God can speak through others. Does he have to speak just through an inner voice? Mm -hmm. Or can he use some other person to be a conduit? He can, he has so many ways, guys, his spirit to work in our lives. And that's the promise we have. So just be comforted by that this week. Whatever you're facing, you've got God's spirit there. And he will teach you. You just lean on him. Just say, Lord, I need to know. And we only got two commandments. Believe on Jesus. And that other one, Dottie, love what? He's pointing to him. Love one another. Yeah, you got to love that guy next to you. <laughs> love one another. Let's pray. Lord, thanks so much for your word. Thanks for the privilege to have home church today, even without my true appreciation. But I know you cause all things to work together. So, <laughs> work this out really good, Lord. Let, let Marius take home a lot of Daniel's toys. In Jesus' name. <laughs> Amen. I just thought of that. That could be the whole reason that we... Mahalo for joining us. If you'd like more information about us, go to our website, AmazingGraceKona.com, and click the link to follow us on Facebook. That's AmazingGraceKona.com. 
Mahalo and God bless.